I really believe we have yet to understand the power of declaration for the church. Amen. Children can be dismissed to class. We have had a full morning. I know there's a lot yet to come. And God is good. Amen. I trust that you are digging into the Word of God for your own and on your own. I believe that we're going to raise more than the $3,500 we committed for the cabinets for River North Church basements. I just feel, I feel like when it's all said and done, we'll, we'll be giving them about $5,000, don't you? I think we can do that. I just go ahead and declare it. Amen. Call it done. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to bless them. And let's see. Paula and I have a little trip this afternoon. And uh, so we might sneak out and uh, hopefully we give as many hugs as we could before service but we might sneak out no no if you're hearing a voice in the distance and you don't see anybody up here it will be the Holy Ghost that won't be me although this wireless goes a pretty long distance amen Turn with me, if you would, to Matthew 16 in your Pages Bible. Hold up the Pages Bibles. Let me see how many Pages Bibles we got. We've been giving away Bibles and encouraging everybody to get a Pages Bible. Let your kids see you reading one of these. Because these books don't look like other books, do they? You can tell that's a Bible. You carry this in a restaurant with you or in the grocery store and lay it in your heart, people know it's a Bible. Lay it on the dash of your car. Just don't let it get sun-baked. But people know it's a Bible. When we built this building, I believe it was right up there in that front, we put a pin in the ground, a corner pin, and we took all of our measurements from there, and we checked and double-checked square, and then the man that did the digging came, and he checked and double-checked to make sure he was square, and then the block layer came, and he checked and double-checked to make sure he was square. But it all depended on that cornerstone. Jesus built his church, is building his church based on the cornerstone of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, it's really important that nothing came along and bumped that stake. We didn't we didn't run our machinery too close to that stake. We made sure that stake was guarded. We made sure we kept painting around it every day. 
kept putting flags up and stakes up. Don't touch that stake. Don't move that stake. Now, in the day that we live in, there's a lot of people trying to mess with the corners, trying to change Jesus into their image. He's not going to change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You can read the book of Acts 10,000 times, and it's never going to say anything different than it says. It's established some things that we must adhere to. And today I want to talk about the rock, but I want to talk about us. Jesus said to those Hebrews that were standing along the path on Palm Sunday that if these hold their peace, I'm able to raise up out of these stones a nation. We are the lively stones that Jesus is raised up because we won't be silent. If you're a worshiper in this room, if you're one of those that's gotten past yourself and your shyness to where you can go ahead and cry aloud, glory to God, hallelujah, you are one of those lively stones. And you know what happens when you drop a lively stone into a pond? I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now that tells me that there's some prevailing expected. There's some opposition to be had. That tells me that hell would love to prevail against you and me and what God is doing. Amen? Now, the Bible talks about hell more than it does heaven because you need to understand that there is an enemy. There is an opposition to us. The, the gates of hell are wanting you to stay away. But we're not going to stay away. We're going to storm the gates. The church of the living God is going to make a difference. We didn't, we didn't get endued with power from on high so we could get our sore throat healed only. Now, it does heal sore throats. I had a bad one a couple days ago, and it went away in Jesus' name. It works. I'm thankful for that. But the power from on high is a wrecking ball, amazing, hell-chasing, hell-storming power. And it's not just for people that sign up for the class. It's not just for people that are, you know, uh, special. No, Jesus commanded in Acts chapter 1, he commanded them to tarry in Jerusalem till you be endued with power, dunamis, from on high. Until you feel like your insides is full of TNT, dynamite. You're not there yet. Keep Tarrying. So well, I can't afford a trip to Jerusalem. You're sitting in it. Yes, Jerusalem, which is above. That Jerusalem he's talking about, it's not any longer over in Israel, in, an, in the Middle East. That Jerusalem has broke out of the cage. It's expanded its borders. It stretched forth its tent stakes. And it came to my house. And it came to the river this morning 
We are the holy city of God from above. It's come down to dwell among men. We are the Jerusalem. And the longer you stay, the more you press in, the more grow groups you get involved in, the more classes you enroll in, the more prayer meetings you sit in on, and prayer you do in the pew and praise you give out of your mouth, the more Jerusalem comes to earth, the more power you get endued from on high. And it's not the power just to keep your marriage together or the power just to get you to quit smoking cigarettes. It's the power to storm the gates of hell and kick over idols and tear down and destroy the works of the enemy. Woo! Well, y'all can blame Chip Hall, my pastor friend who was here Wednesday night for what I'm preaching to you today. He got me fired up. Look at somebody and say, I bet he can't do 10 points in 10 minutes. <laughs> well, let's see what God has. Turn in your Bible to Romans chapter 12. I might get out here with y'all. Y'all are, y'all are feeling good tonight, today. It feels good down here. Amen. Amen. Woo! Praise God for you. You are an awesome young man. You know that? Praise God. These young people worshiping just fires me up. Yes, sir. I'm telling you what. Uh, yeah, I'm talking about you. <laughs> you too. <laughs> Amen. Where's Carly? Young people like Carly. Yes. Fire me up. Oh, welcome to our our guest. We have... Lots of new faces here. Please let us know with your card and go back there to that hay loft and speak to, say hey to Fritz and the folks at the hay loft and let us know you were here. Romans chapter 12. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. God wants to drop you. Keep your Bible there. We're just going to stay there, so just keep it open in your lap unless you shout it out. It'll be all right. If you get to jumping and dancing around, you might want to lay it down. Okay? God wants to drop you in the pond of your environment. He wants to take you... The, the living stone that you are and drop you into a place where next thing you know, within minutes and hours and days, people are changing. Lives are being delivered and touched because you were there. Oh, hallelujah. I, I don't know about you, but when I stand at the edge of a pond, I can't resist it. I was, I was in Tennessee, and, the, and they had a pond, and it said, do not throw rocks in the water. I was checking for surveillance cameras. Just a little rock. Did you know a little rock makes a ripple? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A little rock. Boop. And it just keeps on going and going and going and going. I've been ever so fascinated by that. It's, it's sort of that domino effect. You line them up. I watched a video while I was studying. I, I call it studying, <laughs> gathering information when I'm watching YouTube. It's, <laughs> yeah. Do you know ministers can get a tax write-off for going to movies? Did you know that? I study these things. It's important. It's research. I watched a, a YouTube on the domino effect. World record. 53,000 dominoes. And it was the most elaborate piece of art. And tall structures and towers. And, and 
little crystals and just fancy. And some of them, when they fell over, they lit up, you know, and it's just, whoo, it's entertaining. Now, I just sold, y'all. There'll be a whole bunch of folks on YouTube when church is over. You can't do it now because the church Wi-Fi is all messed up. So I ain't worried about that. But it took six days to set this elaborate display up. And they pushed the first one, and it took six minutes and eight seconds. And it was all just a pile of mess to clean up. Probably took six hours to clean it up or more. The effect that you as a single individual believer can have on planet Earth, you have no idea you have no idea the effect if you can just get one. Josh, just one. The people you're going to touch, the world has no idea. The impact you're going to have. You, you do the uh, rodeo scene. There's, they need the Holy Ghost in some of those guys. Amen? They need a light in that arena. They need somebody that can shine and step up and say, oh, I don't do that. I'm not going to say that. No, come here. Let me love on you. Give them a big old hug. What in the world? What happened to you? Ripple. Yes, sir. Next thing you know, it's two and 10 and 20 and 500 and thousands, little by little by little. Verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, some folks take that in a religious way, like, don't you be like the world, don't you, don't you. I take it as an empowering. Present your body a living sacrifice, and when you do, you're not going to be conformed to the world. You're... The power in you is a million times greater than the peer pressure in the world. The power in you is a million times greater than what they're peddling out there on the street. The power in you is greater. I know what I'm talking about. One of us can put a thousand to flight and two ten thousand. Go figure. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I am more than a conqueror through him that loved us. We're not going to be defeated. I'm so sick and tired of mealy mouth, weak need Christians. Oh, the devil's just been on my back all day. No, he hasn't. No, he hasn't. He has no right on your back. And if he was on your back, you, you don't even want to go there. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. If the devil shows up, and he will sometimes, just look at him and say, you know what? I'm going uh, to be uh, quoting scripture. I I'm going to be lifting up the name of Jesus here for a little bit. Uh, if you want to stick around, you know, that'll be fine because uh, Jesus is going to be exalted. And, and if you're interested in, you know, listening i got a lot of stuff I'd like to say. And the Bible says if you resist the devil, he will flee from you. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You have the power to land in that pond and throw circles way out there, yes, you have no idea the power that's in you until you start decreeing and declaring. Verse 3, For I say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Well, when that happens, God has a way of... He can fix that real quick. Amen.
but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. These are all things you can do if you're transformed by the renewing of your mind by the power of the Holy Ghost. These are things that are to be the norm in the church of the living God. Paul was writing to the church at Rome who had had a great revival, who had experienced water baptism, had experienced the infilling, the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And these things he's writing about are just the normal expectation. This is your reasonable service. Nothing... Big or to be puffed up about. Just do what you're called to do. Do what you're gifted to do. Do it the best you can do. Do it by the power of the Holy Ghost and move on. We are members one of another. So there's no way you can gossip about somebody in the body of Christ and it not affect you. The ripple effect. You throw out negative words, and boy, next thing you know, it's, a, it's impacting somebody. It's affecting somebody. It's, it's doing harm beyond where you meant for it to go and what you meant for it to do. You've got to be careful. Verse 9, let love be without, the King James says, dissimulation. That word means hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil, cling to that which is good. There is evil and there is good. And the Holy Ghost will show you the things that are evil. Uh, some folks just think that, you know, we ought to just preach against sin all the time. We ought to just rant and rave and rail on sinners and sinners, and this is a sin, and you're going to hell if you do this, and you're going to hell if you don't do that, and rant and rave and spit and sputter. I've learned that a whole lot more can be done through the power of the Holy Ghost and a ripple effect of a life transformed then I can do all day long screaming and yelling and throwing condemnation on folks. The Holy Spirit, the Bible says, will lead and guide you into all truth. I'd much rather shepherd a lot of folks with transformed minds than I would people that are convinced with an argument Now, verse 10 is where I've been trying to get to. Are you ready? Okay, this is what we're going to do as the river. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation. Continuing steadfastly in prayer. Distributing to the needs of the saints. Given to hospitality. Boy, you make a ripple if you do some of this stuff. You, oh, yeah. People will start noticing. Let me just stop there. The, the world, I told Paula this the other day. And I, I, think, I think this is evident. The world's getting easier and easier to 
love on or to um, get their attention, to shine light on, because there's not many doing it. If you walk into the place of business with a lifted countenance and a smile on your face and greet them before they get a chance to greet you, which is pretty easy to do, amen, and just, just show up and show off, hey, how are you today? I call a place of business, and they answer, you know, Acme Products, how can I help you? Say, hey, this is Paul Bishop. How are you today? Who? Uh, uh, um, uh, I'm okay. Uh, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for asking. It's easy. It's so easy. You walk into a business and they just, yep, what can I do for you? I go, how are you today? Nice to see you. And they don't know, I mean, they're like, oh. and, and, you, and how are you today is not a question. It really is not. A, it's a greeting. It's how you say hello. Hey, what's up, dude? Hey, hello. Right? In the South, it's just, how you doing? How you doing? Good, how you doing? Good. They're not really asking for a rundown, right? It's a relative thing, you know, we're doing good compared to most of the folks in the news. Amen? Got to have that positive look. But if you start doing this stuff, love without hypocrisy, man, wow. I, I saw a testimony of a pastor, and, and he was praying with this couple and praying for this couple. And they came to him, and they had a testimony. And she said, I was standing in my kitchen, and felt something just welling up in me and I started to pray and, and God just showed up in my house and I gave him praise and all of a sudden I was speaking in them tongues and my husband came running over and he said, lay hands on me, I want that. And she said, I, uh, uh, I, uh, she said I'd never done that before. He said, he grabbed my hand stuck it on his head, and boom, it hit him, and he started speaking in tongues. Holy Ghost, outpouring. And they were telling this pastor about this, and he said, yeah, he said, my daddy's a preacher, and he don't believe in tongues. He wants to meet with you. He happens to be the director of some denomination that preaches against tongues and he wants to meet with you he said good I'd love to meet with him and he said when he walked in the door he was real stiff you know and said I said Lord what am I going to tell this guy and the Lord said just love him and he said he walked up and stuck his hand out he said I just went right past that hand threw my arms around him, gave him a big old hug. It's the next thing I know, tears are running down his face. And he said, where can I learn about this thing that's happened to my son and my daughter-in-law? He said, you can find it in the book of Acts. He said, I don't like the book of Acts. <laughs> well, but love, love affectionately, without hypocrisy. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and watch the ripple effect just flow. Just flow, flow, flow. Pastor Chip preached on the 
contagious faith Wednesday night. If you were not here, go look it up. Now I want you to skip down to verse 19. Can we do that, Kim? Oh, man, you're quick. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. That's a hard one. If we could stay out of that business. Now, when the Lord says something is his... I don't want to touch it. I'm, I'm out. Amen? I'm out. That's above my pay grade. Amen? Amen? The tithe belongs to the Lord. I'm out. I'm, it, you take that. Amen? Get that out of my account as quick as you can. Amen? I'm going to zail that. Venmo that. Do something. Get Get that out. Write that check. Put it in that envelope. Make sure it's in the Bible or something. And it's mine, right? Amen? Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. An old vindictive, bitter spirit that's wishing somebody evil, hoping somebody's life is messed up because they did you wrong. Give that to the Lord. Amen. Just get that out of here. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. You can have it. Take it. Amen? Leave that alone. He says, Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. So, if you've got somebody that you feel like the Lord's, you're giving them to the Lord, bake them a pie. Buy them a dozen donuts. Give them a card for the coffee shop. So here, I want to, I want to give you this. Ripple effect. Their heart just turns. Pew! What in the world happened? Oh, my goodness. I can't believe it. If, you, if he thirsts, give him drink, for in doing so thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Verse 21 is what we're trying to get to. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. This is not one of them legalistic things. This is empowering. When you take the word of God, when God says to be not something, take it as an empowering. He won't ask you to do what you can't do. When he says forgive one another, he doesn't tell you to do that without empowering you to do it. He told the woman, neither do I condemn thee, go and sin no more. He wasn't outlining a legal box that she had to live in. He was empowering her to walk out of sin and walk in righteousness. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. Watch it. You, I double dog dare you to start doing good. You see somebody that's cutting in on traffic, just back up and let them in. You see somebody trying to be the first in the, in the checkout line, just say, hey, won't you go ahead of me? I've been trying to, I try to be one of those people who says, hey, I was in line. Hey, I was here. What are you doing? But I, I found out it's just much more effective. You say, hey, you're in a hurry. I'm, I'm good. You go ahead. You know, be nice. Be kind to one another. Oh, overcome evil with good. We live in a world and a time when people don't believe that. People don't believe you can overcome evil with good. They think you've got to have more evil. To get to fix evil. But it never works. It just leads to more evil. 
But what if we, the church of the living God, begin to live out the, our faith and there was a ripple effect. And all of a sudden, the people at the river go out there and rub shoulders with some people from some other churches. And all of a sudden, those people begin to fellowship with some other folks. And the next thing you know, Lancaster is the nicest town in the world to visit. And people say, wow, man, that's the sweetest bunch of folks over there. <laughs> Overcome evil with good. Now, don't look at me and say, I tried that and it don't work. I ain't buying it. You did it wrong. It does work. It's in the Word of God. The Word of God does not lie. The Word of God will not let you down. The Word of God will not fail you. He keeps His promises. Stand with me if you would as they come to lead us in some songs. The Bible says in Matthew... You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people put a light, light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand. And it gives light to all in the house. Hey, don't ever let a church building become a bushel for your praise, your testimony, your kindness, your goodness. If you can hug here, you can hug at Kroger. Oh, yeah. I let grown men see me hug other grown men at the golf course. Give me a hug. I don't know you. Give me a hug anyway. <laughs> hey Amen. Mess with me, I'll pick you up and twirl you like I did Tim Reed. <laughs> First time I hugged him at the river, I picked him up and spun him around and set him back down. He didn't know what happened. <laughs> Give him a hug. Give him a big bear hug. Overcome evil with good. In the same way, let your light shine before others. They may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I've come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until it is all accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. I'm looking for somebody that will push that first domino. I'm looking for somebody that will drop that first pebble into the pond. I'm looking for somebody that will say, I want to start something. Shirley, one voice, one person begin to talk about the academy. Now children that were living without Jesus will know not just that he died but that he rose again huh oh yeah maybe you don't feel like you can teach a Sunday school class of children but you know those teachers need supporting people around them they need teachers aides to sit with that troubled child that needs that special touch. Those Sunday school teachers need prayer warriors in the corner just sitting in a chair praying while they're teaching the Word of God, calling those children's names. Get a list of those names. You say, well, I can't teach Sunday school. I don't want to be a teacher's aide, but I'll take a list of your, ch your roster of third graders and I'll pray over them. Make a ripple. Watch out. Watch out. You start that domino. I'll write a letter to someone incarcerated. Cody, I got a letter I wrote you in 2019. Still in my computer. I read it the other day. <coughs> he wrote a letter from 
Southeastern Correctional, I believe it was, asking if he could be a member of the River Church. Four years ago. Start a ripple effect. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to ask you to start with your feet right now. Step out of your seat. Walk to the front of this room. And just begin to give the Lord the best that you've got. Say, Lord, here I am. I'm going to overcome evil with good. I'm going to do one good thing today. I'm going to step up to the front of this room and be counted with the good. LifeWise has a table out in the foyer. They'll mention that to you here in a few minutes. Josh has a testimony of the goodness of God in his life. Those of you that know him, celebrate with him today. Encourage him today. Congratulate him today. Amen. How many of you have been set free in the last few months from something in your life? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 25, 30. I don't even know. Freedom! Get a testimony from that guy right there. 30 years! 30 years! I'm free! I'm free! You can be free. Woo! Oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I spoke a word. You're singing over me. Woo! Come on. Yes, Lord. Do it, Lord. You have been so, so good. So good, so good, so good, so good. For I took a breath, you breathe your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending.
climb up coming after me so all you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me there's no shadow you won't light up His presence is so rich this morning, as it is in here every, mor- every morning, every Sunday, every Wednesday, every time you're in the house. Oh, we thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you for loving us, Lord God. Help us, Lord, to be a ripple, a pebble to create the ripple this morning, Lord God, as we go. I ask your blessing on Pastor Paul and Paula as they go. Keep them safe, set a hedge of protection around them. Set your blessing before and all around them, Lord God, and bring them back safely to us. Ask your blessing over this house and over this congregation and over our streaming congregation, Lord God, that this word would be set in their spirit. And that, Lord God, as they go out to the supermarket and the restaurant and to the things they have to do in their workplaces, Lord God, that they are that pebble that creates a ripple of your love Pour out your love, Lord God, through us. We thank you for your presence today. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Y'all go, be blessed, be the pebble that Pastor talked about. Visit the um, LifeWise Academy table. Miss Shirley will be out there so you can learn about how you can be a pebble in our school systems. And uh, Father's Day is next week. Bring Dad, Grandpa your adoptive dad, your neighbor dad, bring them back so we can celebrate. God bless you. We love you all.